Hi, I'm Rakai here and welcome to the third part of my trilogy and uh, today we're gonna look at filling the spline. Uh, filling the spline again because I already made a video about it but it was not ideal and I kind of started from very low level and it was not like ideal okay so today we're looking at a different solution that is way easier and com kind of combines previous two videos uh, i already recorded first one being setting the decal size um, procedurally to the size of a mesh and second part being projecting that that mesh to a surface and if you didn't watch those two videos link is in the description uh, I'm gonna run the simulation so you can see how it looks. First one is of course uh, decal scaled to the to the mesh, and second part that rotating torus just projected to a surface. And today I already made this blueprint, so I'm just gonna show you how it looks. Um, this is the projecting spline, and as you can see, instead of just a torus. We have a spline and that spline will use those two techniques to just make a new mesh and fill it and of course this is like viable for runtime we can uh, get that spline we can change the the points we can make more points you can do this and then just uh, update it and it will it works it kind of is not very precise, but it's a matter of uh, settings, right? You can make it more precise, you can make it less precise. Uh, it all depends on what you need, right? So we can also make this very big, maybe like this one, update it. And it will take a little bit of time, but yeah, it now fills the, the whole area with that with that mesh and projects it to the surface. And how did I do it? Uh, well, let's look at the code. Um, doo -doo -doo. This is the projecting spine blueprint. And yeah, first thing first we do uh, is, well, we have that scene capture component today, we have a decal, and instead of a mesh, we just add a spline. And uh, on begin plane, this is just, you know, update functions so it clears everything and just rebuilds everything. Uh, and we make a sequence on the first kind of node, we do something like this. So, uh, we convert spline to a polygon. Very nice function that is using the geometry scripting. If you don't know what that is and you didn't use it, it's disabled by default, but you can enable it in the plugins. Uh, so just type geometry uh, script, this one, which is in beta, but like beta means it won't go away. It will change probably. Uh, some functionality will change, but the uh, the plugin will stay with us. Uh, so when you enable that, you now have access to that to that very nice function. We can of course make that sampling options, uh, make different sampling options, so we can you know change uh, how many samples we want to create. Uh, we have some error tolerance, sampling spacing, all that stuff, so you can configure how uh, that polygon is created. Uh, then we make a polygon list from that single polygon. Um, this is uh, because we kind of need to input it to another function and it kind of gets that polygon list as an input. Uh, but you can just take that polygon and maybe make your own solution if you want. So we make that polygon list, then we make a dynamic mesh component. You can, you could also uh, just make that dynamic mesh component right here and configure it basically straight in that uh, in that blueprint. But I just like to make a new mesh component because maybe I don't want to always create that mesh. Maybe I want to use that spline 
uh, for other purposes and just create that dynamic mesh when I need it. So we create that dynamic mesh and we apply the same settings as uh, in that torus mesh. So uh, we go to, uh, well, physics, of course, we don't want gravity, we don't, we don't want collision, disable all of that stuff in, and uh, select visible in scene capture only. So same stuff as with the torus. And then we save that dynamic mesh component, get dynamic mesh, and we do this function. So append, append polygon list triangulation. And uh, as an input, we just plug in that polygon list we made before. And uh, yeah, just configure material sets, be, uh, set one set, because we need to add a material to that, of course. And for the material, I made a new M field that is um, just an unlit material, so it doesn't calculate, compute too much, it's just emissive color. I kinda experimented with Fresnel, but it didn't really work, so it's, it's just this, right? Uh, let's apply save. So now that we have that mesh and apply the material, we have that update decal function. And uh, this is the same stuff in as in my previous video about um, projecting mesh to a surface, but one thing is different uh, and it's uh, the box extent. In my video, uh, I just used box extent because I had a mesh, but for the dynamic mesh, we don't have that function. So we kind of have to get the bounding box. And from that bounding box, we calculate what we want. So we get extent, which is um, max minus mean, divided by two, this is the box extent, and box origin, which is uh, minus uh, or minimum plus maximum, and divided by two, that's, that's the origin. Rest is the same. And uh, the third pin is shifting the decal and the, um, the camera, because when you run it, it defaults to, to that origin of the blueprint. And when we make that mesh, we kind of want to shift everything to that center, to the center of that polygon. And that's basically what we are doing here, right? So set relative for location for, for decal. So it's just center of the, of the polygon. And for the camera, we uh, almost do the same, but for Z, we just keep the relative location because if we just zero it out, then it won't capture the polygon. And the last thing is just capture scene because I have disabled um, uh, the capture every frame and capture of movement. So it runs only when I need it. So in this case, on update event. And oh, I also change projection type to orthographic because uh, it makes more sense in that, uh, in that case. And that's basically it. Uh, we could probably get into more, more details on how to convert actually spline to polygon, but uh, I kind of find myself uh, maybe a little too um, unqualified <laughs> to do this. And uh, well, Unreal already did it, right? So it's everything in that function and you can also use other functions from geometry scripts uh, to make all sorts of other functions and uh, kind of change it to whatever you want. So I am not sure about performance because it's kind of heavy. So um, we probably, or I should probably just poke around and see what else can I do to make this run faster? Because it's not, not that fast. <laughs> but um, I think that already in this state is, it's nice to, uh, to create some prototypes and it's a nice base for future development. So yeah, that's, uh, that's basically it. We can kind of test again if everything is working. Maybe make a little dance, makes make a new point, a few more points, because 
I actually didn't test how it behaves with, behaves with a lot of points. So maybe let's do something like this and see if it works. Yeah, it works nicely. Of course, we don't have that many lines. Let's maybe remove that blueprint and that blueprint because we don't really need them anymore. And let's see how long it will take if we make a few more samples. Maybe let's make 20. So double the, the lines. And let's see how it works now. So, okay, it takes consider considerably more time to, to generate. But once it generates, it, it, the FPS goes back. So probably if I wanted to use this in a game, then I would kind of uh, put that generation into the loading phase. So before the player can do something, before he can play, uh, then just regenerate whatever you want. And uh, yeah, you can also, if you want, uh, probably you can save the texture you just generated. So uh, if we have uh, the render texture that we hooked to the scene capture component today, we can get that texture target and we can export it to this, right? So this is a very, I guess, very um, fast way to kind of cache what we generated and regenerate it when something changes. So if we had a strategy game, for example, we had, um, why the FPS now get so slow? I swear it's something with Unreal Engine 5.4 because I didn't have those starters in 5.3, so we kind of, I guess, have to wait for updates. Uh, maybe something in generation. I'm not really sure. Uh, so if we had a strategy game where um, we had like 10 countries, each country has each, each country has some borders, and those borders are um visible to the player then you would generate this once on the loading phase and just export to disk and whenever that file exists you just use this and uh, input it to the decal right so you don't generate another polygon you don't need to update a lot of stuff you just uh, get that decal the size i guess could be just saved as well and just input that projection uh, with that texture target you, could, you just exported to disk. So you import it again, plug it to, to set texture parameter value, and that should run a lot, a lot faster. And uh, yeah, that, that, that's it. That's my idea for uh, kind of border fields for uh, countries or states or whatever in strategy games. And it definitely has its issues, but you know, with enough tinkering and some more uh, thought, <laughs> I think it could be optimized to be actually game viable. So yeah, let, let me know, this is the end of my uh, trilogy. Let me know what you think about this idea. Maybe you have a better idea. Uh, and if you like it, drop a like, drop a comment. If you disagree, also drop a comment, uh, drop a sub, and see you probably next month <laughs> with another topic, which is totally uh, unrelated to this one, I hope, unless I find another solution that works better and is even nicer to use. But for now, that's it. Hope you have a great next part of the day, unless you watching, you're watching this before sleep, then just have a good night. And see you next time. Bye-bye.